Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about my top four tips for painting for Golden Demon. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V style. It's mid-December here and that means Golden Demon is coming up shockingly fast. I'm deep in the middle of prep of my various projects and as I'm working on them I thought I would share my top four tips with you uh, for Golden Demon figures. Now, I'm not going to say this is how to win a Golden Demon because that's stupid. What I am going to say, though, is these are the best ideas I have to help you put your best foot forward in the contest. Let's talk about what they are. Number one, choosing the right figures. This is really important and often overlooked. A good figure for Golden Demon is one that's generally open, that can be painted without too many sub-assemblies, or at least with reasonable ones, where you have the ability to display your skill on the miniature. So when I say open, what I mean is its pose should be one where the figure is well displayed and has a good viewing angle. Not every figure is like this. Some are rather hunched, or shrunken down, or in weird positions, and just don't really lend themselves to painting. Make sure your figure is open, has an expressive angle, and has a story you can tell. We'll talk a little more about that later. But also, it's best if the figure has a mix of different materials or textures wherein you can show off your skill at tackling these different items. So if it has skin, and armor, and leather, and fur, and hair, and cloth, you get the idea. Finding the right figure can often be challenging because not only does it need to be, or should it be, all of the things I just talked about, but most importantly, it should also be one that grabs you aesthetically. You're going to be working on this figure for a very long time. As such, you better love it. You will simply push yourself harder and do better on figures you find aesthetically compelling than ones that you don't. Tip number two, use the right tools. Now this one might sound kind of silly, but I actually think it's very important. When I sat down to paint these models I'm gonna show you today, I didn't bust out an old brush. I didn't use things that I'm unfamiliar with. I got out a clean brush, crisp, sharp, new one that I knew was going to perform well. And that's what I'm going to do the majority of the work on this figure with, all of the figures for this unit. At the same time, I used paints that I know that I've used before. Whether we're talking about the actual techniques you apply it with, or the tools themselves, make sure they are things you are both familiar with, and that you know how they're going to respond, how they're going to react, how to fix things, when you encounter the inevitable mistakes and screw-ups and issues that you will face along the way. It simply happens. And the more you know your tools, the better you will do. Having good, clean, uh, high-quality tools, good paints, good brushes, etc., can only help you in your quest. Now, can you win a Golden Demon with some old crappy brushes and bad paints and yada yada yada? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. If you're Mozart, if you're Jack Kerouac, if the first thing you bang out is incredible, if you're that naturally gifted, why not? But for the rest of us, us mortals, uh, don't ever fight your tools. So use things that are good, that will perform, and that importantly, you know how they will perform. Tip number three, tell a story, a Warhammer story. You have to both always be telling some kind of story, some kind of narrative, something with your figures, but also it has to be a Warhammer story. Live in the IP, know the lore, know the important things about the miniatures. This is often more of a thing in 40k than it is on the Age of Sigmar side, but it does matter in both. Ultimately, one of the things the judges look for above all else 
is that you understand their world and are telling stories within it. That doesn't mean you can't be creative, but it does mean you have to work within the established lore. So don't just put a bunch of 40k stuff onto your Age of Sigmar guys, as I am very prone to do, and expect that to do well. That's simply not part of the Mortal Realms as it's construed. Make sure when you're working on something like a Space Marine that you have those battle honors or those chapter colors or I don't know, whatever it is, put the things in the right places where they go and belong. Live in the IP, but just as importantly, tell a story. Now this matters more in certain categories than other. Things like Duel and Diorama is really all about the story. But even with a single figure or a unit or a monster, things like your base and the color scheme that you choose to use will still have a narrative to it. You can still tell a story. Is your figure clean or beat up? Are they road-worn? Are they dusty, weathered, right? What does the base look like? What environment are they in? How is that reflected on the figure? All of those things matter. The judges want to see the stories you're trying to tell within the Warhammer. Number four, paint clean, paint precise. This is really important. Style doesn't actually matter that much, at least broadly construed. When you look at the past two Golden Demons that have, occur, that have occurred, both at the US and Adepticon, as well as the most recent one in the UK, there's actually a wide variety of styles on display. It's certainly not all just heavy metal plus, 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 plus. plus. No, some of them are, of course, but there are many different styles on display. The important thing about them is that they're consistent, and they have a high level of technical skill on display, polish, and finish. Even if it's meant to be something dirty and disgusting, a Nurgle model that's rotten and rusty, consistent, even, and appropriate application of that weathering and rusting is what's going to carry the day and make that figure stand apart. So when you're painting, as you see me doing here, working up this small section, I am working very carefully and very precisely. I am trying to be very clean. I am trying to be very accurate, very smooth. That finish, that polish, that precision, all matters. Regardless of the exact style you're trying to work in, a high finish, a high level of technical skill on display is really important. The judges are looking at a lot of figures in a very short amount of time, and Golden Demon is very different than most other miniature painting competitions in that it values the technical side of painting much heavier than the other elements. That's not to say those other elements aren't present. That's not to say they don't matter. It's just that the technical is by far the heaviest. So working carefully, working precisely, smoothly, getting those blends as crisp and precise as you can, all of that really, really matters. It wouldn't be a tip video if I didn't have a bonus tip. So, bonus tip number five. This is more about the psychology. As I've been talking here in the last couple minutes, I've been showing you a figure I'm working on. This is one model out of many models in a unit. And you see me working on just this one small area of his back. And I will work the entire model like this, carefully, precisely. But I will also then go back and glaze it and stipple and blend more and more and more and more. And that's tip number five. When you're painting for Golden Demon, you're not painting to time. You are painting to a particular goal. That goal is a high quality, quote unquote, perfect, technical, con technically consistent finish. What I mean by that is you can either 
paint a time. I'm going to paint this figure in one hour, 20 hours, 30 hours, 40 hours, whatever. Or you can paint to finish. I will paint this until it is as close to perfection as I am capable of, regardless of the hours it takes. And my best advice for you is to try your best to go down that second road, which means that's why I'm working on it now in December, long in advance, three months in advance, and I spend 30, 40 hours a week painting. I'm working on this now because I'm going to need lots of time to continually refine what I'm working on, to pay attention to every little detail, to make sure that everything is as close to perfect as I can get it, and that I've put in the maximum amount of effort into every element of this unit. So don't paint to time, paint to finish. Give yourself the appropriate amount of time to work on that one project. Make it something you're truly proud of and that will stand apart from the other uh, items in the case and in the judge's eyes. So there you go. There's my five tips for Golden Demon. I hope these help you out. I think they're something that can really give you uh, an opportunity to put your best foot forward. And certainly they're the rules that I follow as I'm working on my miniatures. In the end, things like sticking to an Evie Metal style, I've never found that to be compelling. And when you look at the winners, that clearly isn't what matters. The things I've listed are, as near as I can tell, what will separate you from the pack and give you the best chance of bringing home a trophy. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got any questions, drop those down in the comments below. Always happy to answer every question that's asked. If you want to take your next step on your miniature hobby journey, there's a Patreon link down below focused on review and feedback that gives you a chance to join an awesome Discord community full of enthusiastic hobbyists. As always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.